So we're back doing another bit of filament here. He's just hooking up the pipe out there. And we'll be back. It's reading now in a few minutes. You get me this shop to see can I do a bit of video on to see what I do on my end. It's a rather boring day when everything goes well, so we try and make sure everything goes well. He's just connecting up the pipe out there. You might be able to see him in the distance. He's literally 400 meters away from me now. Well, he's only about 150 meters away from me, but he's connecting into 400 meters of piping. So we get about an hour spread now, but I'd say without any problem. And hear him roaring on the radio now in a minute. We are connected up to the big slurry store. So, valve is open. We're just really waiting for the shout now to get going again. We have no priming to do on this job because of self priming because the slurry level is way higher than the pump. And it's only just literally a matter of opening the main valve that or orange valve that's there is controlling the slurry coming out of the store at the moment. It's a hydraulic valve. This takes two services to work. The pump at the moment, one for priming and one for the main outlet valve. Yeah. I'm ready to go, let me up. Okay. So as I said, all we have to do is open the main valve, you watch the blue pipe, You'll see it giving a bit of a kick there. Slurry is flowing. Just engage the PTO slowly. And that's where we're going. Alright, you're running. No priming required. Normally we'd have to prime it up with a little orange primer. But on this job we don't. Should have slurry now in a few seconds. You don't have to drive the pump over fast at this stage because in short distance it's really nice slurry, it's nice and thin. It's ideal for umbilical spreading. Now it's being connected directly to the store, it's the same as if it was been force fed into the pump. So that's it, he's up and running. And uh, not much else is going to happen for an hour, so I'll knock off the camera. So now, everyone, we just have this field spread. So uh, I got my extra piping down. I have way too much piping, uh, unfortunately. <coughs> so I'm thinking of doing now. We're just after blowing out. I have my lollipop shut to hold air pressure in the pipe, so there's literally no weight. It's the best way of moving pipe when you're dragging through fields or you have to drag quite a lot of piping. Blow it out, hold the air pressure in it, stop it from going into a knot. There's no way in the pipe then, so it's very easy move. So I got to fold up my arms now so I can get through the gap. So we gotta go through this gap and I'll see, I, I may maybe see how much piping is behind me, so my father doesn't have to come out. But I don't know whether I'll go in and I could start and swing it down that way and try and pull in piping or just go straight and knock it off and, and roll up piping to bring it in. I think I'll probably go at the rolling up because there is a bit of a bridge here and I don't really fancy pulling the pipe around that concrete lintel. It mightn't go so well. So it's one of the other things you always gotta be careful when you're pulling pipe in or that that um you know what you're pulling it around because you pull around the wrong thing and all of a sudden you got a hole in the pipe which isn't nice. So anyways <coughs> my uh my nose is blocked to to the last so it is at the minute. So I can't really talk say a whole lot. Anyways, we'll um drag this in this field should be a good bit drier there's quite there is actually quite a bit of grass here. you can see it waving in the wind the wind is still very strong so i'll try and do not that much recording outside and try and do it all in the cab just to leave it that you're able to hear what i'm saying but um anyways it's this one and then we'll go through the hedge then next after this and we'll just keep going and when we get this side done then it's roll up and reroute and do the other side of the 
the coal piles out. That's usually how we do it. So we get this all dragged in now, anyways. So you can. I don't know what you can see there, but you can see the pipe. Yeah, that's really, we'll get this in and we'll get rolling and whatnot and get spreading this field. I think I have a bit more to tell you and put the drone up and probably finish the video at that. Yeah. So I think I've covered nearly all the basics of how the pipe would work. Bar the pump, that's the only thing I haven't done yet. I might stitch it in or it might be dead. I don't know. We'll work it out when we get that far. So. So now everyone, um, I just was thinking there, I haven't shown you taking off a pipe or rolling up or that, so we'll do it now while I'm just rolling up that pipe. Hope you can hear me okay, because it is quite windy. I hope I have the camera angled right, I don't know what it is. But anyways, we twist this off. One of the first things you should always do though before you take off a pipe is just stand on it, make sure there's like no pressure in it. If that was rock hard, you do not want to open that. Or you, third you wouldn't be able to get away quick enough from it. But as I was saying earlier, because of how this, um, how these clips work, where you literally have to be right over it, even when you use the spanners, when you go take the one off the back of the tractor, even ones in the field, you can get a big gush of slurry can come out. And if you're standing over it, psh, I've often got covered because of that. Whereas the old Bauer clips, you could tie a rope on, I used to have a rope in the tractor, you just hook it onto the clip and flick it, and you'd stand well away from it. But it's not so much a problem when you're after blowing out because there's it's only air and there's no real slurry. But anyways, so we need to roll this up. So <coughs> I'm gonna hook it back into that pipe for rolling rather than putting the new reel. So hopefully now I can do this like this. So you can see how there's like a little lug there and they just sit in together and twist and they just clip on and one of the great things about them clips is there's no male and female ends so you can roll them up either way and you can roll them up together no problem whereas the power clips you could roll power clips up together but they take up so much space and it, very, it could very, it used to damage the clips quite a lot doing it that way but them a lot safer or a lot easier but anyways so let's see if we start rolling now <coughs> so now we start rolling up our pipe so I'm gonna flick my switch I don't know how well you can see, I'd say my big head is in the way, but you should be able to see the pipe rolling. But anyways, in normal circumstances, because I'm still connected out there and I'm not rolling up for finish, I'm just rolling up to get into the field, because it is fairly dead straight, so there's no fear of a twist in the way. I just have to pay attention till I see the pipe start to come that way across the gap, and that's how I know that I have all I need pulled in. But just in rolling up in general, you always want to make sure your pipe is as straight as possible. You always want to, yeah, you always just want to make sure your pipe is straight. You don't want to roll up a pipe if it's like a banana because you'll end up with twists and knots and a mess is what you end up with. So it's always good to make sure you try and get as straight as possible. You can roll up with a mess in it because one bend cancels the other bend so it comes straight anyways <coughs> and you can roll up around corners oh christ my nose is badly blocked at the minute but you can roll up round corners but it's always advisable to go to the furthest to, to roll up from the end that has the longest journey from the corner because it's going to have 
and you want to have less pull on the corner, if it's a corner post drive, you'll have less pull on you're less likely to break it. Things like that. But, that's really it. Yeah, there's just nothing else about rolling. Make sure it doesn't have the railer, keep an eye on it. You know, you know yourself, like, it's as much as piping slurry is. It takes, you know, you have to be with it and you need to make sure that you do everything. That you put, put your pipe right and you get everything done right. But it is in the end, it's, it's quite simple. A lot of what is, is quite simple. Just planning out your pipe is really the only hard bit to it. So, I must nearly have all my pipe flying here now, but. <coughs> we'll, we'll wait. So now. There's my pipe is straight now, so we can start rolling off. We will roll it off down that direction because of how we're going to get across the fence or the hedge this side. I need a loop of piping and then I need to throw it across and then I have to drag the piping out, out the other side. That's how we do it. We have a roll in there now, so we can start rolling it off again. So my pipe is fast because I because I've been rolling that and I kept pushing the air and the door to get out. That's just what happens. But just I'm pulling up the trunk and go off to make sure that the wind is going the right way. Because when I peg it out the door, the, the tractor, I don't want it get hit in the gust of wind and going back into the master river or going into the tractor. I want it going off with itself. So <coughs> the dries of it, all the dries of it. We'll get this off and we'll get the drone up in the air. So now everyone, just to finish up the video, said a few things that have left to be said. <coughs> My flu is, is, or whatever old dose I have, it, it seems to be getting worse. So I just want to get finished up and then I can just concentrate on getting this job done. But anyways, the drone, I don't know can you see it, I haven't got up. Literally just as I stopped recording the last one, I was ready to get that put up start raining and it's still threatening I, could, I, I couldn't say that it's not going to rain and I can't afford to put it up I'll fly in and start pissing rain and then try and fly it back so we'll just leave it for the time being hopefully it'll come in and then in a video on pipe and slurry you can pump it you can pump it a, a long journey back in our heyday we used to have over three kilometers of piping and we'd pump it three kilometers but that was using the ter my father's old 3690 and we had a five inch pipe there'll be a bit more about the history of our umbilical system i'll sit down with my father sometime when we'll talk about it but I, I, for us at the minute this tractor is carrying one two three four five six seven wait, no yeah seven Seven two hundred meters, so I have fourteen hundred meters of piping on this tractor, and our reeler in the yard, our our trail reeler has to has about seven hundred meters more piping. So we have two kilometers of piping. We don't generally go any more than what is on the tractor, but just in terms of pumping, sorry. <coughs> it was actually mentioned to me by someone to uh, mention in a video how you need slurry for piping You need nice runny slurry. You need nice watery stuff nice thin slurry. You cannot go pump thick stuff Oh, you cannot pump thick stuff Like It's a completely different ball game to tankers to pump, to pump slurry. You need it Very watery and the further you want to pump it the more watery it has to be to be able to pump at the distance without having to put him second pumps and stuff like that but within reason you need a fairly watery one of the things that we normally go on when we get to a, a job uh, in the dairy farms it's normally they're 100 percent because they have dairy washings and there tends to be tanks tend to be 100 percent but when you get to beef jobs particularly bale tanks one of the things we do to test to see just how watery this already is a stick something into it a bit of a stick or something and then see pull it out and see is there much uh shit stuck to the stick like lumps of stuff like that uh, obviously it'll change it'll have like the ground but like you don't have bits of fire bits like literally bits of stuff stuck to it like if you were walking through a muddy patch and your wellies would become muddy that kind of a job and 
if you uh, if you let your pony sick and you pull it back out and it's like you're after coating it, you're you're probably got probably too thick. But it is something that has to be remembered, especially for anyone that is getting lads to go piping. It needs to be watery. You, you can't pump thick stuff. You just can't. You, you, you can pump maybe 200 meters, maybe 400 if you're lucky, but then you might be able to fill your dribbler. You might have some droppers working and some not working. It can be messy. You do need it very watery. I can't really remember everything that I should be saying because it's because of the way I'm videoing. Like when I started making the video, that was like 9 o'clock this morning, it's now 3 o'clock. So just that gap of what I can't remember, that and the dose I have isn't really helping either. Something else. I think I have all my bases covered on the piping and the slurry. If there is anything I have forgot, please hit me down in the comments down below. If you're still a bit confused about some aspect of it, hit me down in the comments. Um, one thing as well, I know I would have liked to have been able, when I was talking about the macerator earlier, to show you what it looks like in the inside. It's like a tripod with three star discs and then that, all that is just spins round and it cuts anything and it keeps the pipes going. But we have to do a job on our double bar tanker. The, seal for the inspection plate is gone so we need to put a new seal on it so hopefully when I'm doing that job I'll get my camera on and show you the inside of the macerator. Other than that I think I've all my bases covered. <coughs> if I forgot something hit me down in the comments down below and I'll try and slide it into a different video. Also I plan on doing a live stream at some stage. Probably It'll, it'll be a Tuesday or Thursday one of them videos when I either forget to have something ready or just for whatever reason but if there's a time that suits ye best hit me down in the comments what time suits or does it really matter um, personally it will literally just be a case of when I get into a nice size field where I have half an hour an hour spread ahead of me then I'll do the live stream um, also there is new merch it will be coming soon it, so not only new but a good few new items and I'm very happy with how they've turned out and uh, it's also it's going to be done through a third party so I won't be handling stuff anymore I know some of you that have bought stuff through the eBay links I haven't been just able to ship it out as quick as I would like it's just very hard to keep on top of everything but it's going to be handled by a third party and there is some very nice stuff I'm very happy with how it's coming along but we'll be more about that when that eventually gets sorted <coughs> and I think that is in the card description down below also that was in store if you're thinking again yourself a drone the link is down there to where I got my drone and I think that is it I think I've all my bases covered so hope you enjoyed this video that is it for me please like and subscribe to my channel good luck